in that time. Uh, five years ago, it was time to give it up. I was only 56. I knew I was too young to get out of coaching. But at 56, when throat cancer gets you, you lose 45 pounds of weight all summer long. So it's popular. I don't know why. Even though the national champion in Division II, North Dakota State, anybody ever know anything about that? A couple guys. They won it almost year after year, and all they ran, all they ran was a split back there. And so I got all the books I could for when Jim Wacker was there, who died when he was at University of Minnesota, and Don Mortensen, and all the great coaches that were ever there. And they kept it going, no matter whenever that coach left and went somewhere else. And then like Jim Wacker went to TCU, and TCU, they almost won the national championship. They were up there at number three, and he was the coach of the year. So then, two things. I took my staffs as often as I could. We flew to little North Dakota. State, you know, on a little prop job. We got there after we went to Minneapolis from Salt Lake City. And I took my staff there two different times. And then we went to te Texas Christian two different times. And we did everything that we could to continue to learn, besides read the books, get the articles. We didn't have online in the 80s, okay? So we didn't do that. It would have been nice to. But then we got it right firsthand. And even going to the locker room, see how they do everything. So everything you're here today and everything you're going to see is all the stuff that the champion did. That's North Dakota State, Texas Christian, and how they did it. I know one quote Jim Wacker said when he was at TCU. You remember Eric Dickerson, the running back? Take a look at it, just to tickle you a little bit, and then we'll get going on what it's all about. Thank you, Coach. Okay, now we're in the green. Tights to the left, 50 defense. However, look at both safeties, they're both up. So they're trying to take it away all the way, as best as they can. They got a nine man front right there. You can see the ball's going in there about the 40 yard line. You can take a look right now, we're gonna go over all the spots. The nose of the running back is right on the inside foot of the guards. It's a two foot, three foot, three foot split. And I'm telling you, if it's not exactly right, and we stop practice after play after play after play until the kids can get it right in the summertime. It has to be exactly right. Two foot, three foot, three foot. Two foot center guard, etc. Running back's nose on the inside foot. And it's all because of the mesh. Total elimination of fumbles, mistakes. And it has to be if you're going to read that thing right. And it can't be done at any level. So now take a look at your 50 front. And you'll see later, I'm going to go over it all, but let's just make sure we understand, and I know you do, as you'll see later, we an option, the man on or outside of our tap. <laughs> go left. Okay? Now, why do you think, guys, why do you think it's a good idea to go left in this play? I'm sure he audibilized it. What, what's a good idea? Take a look. Start from the center. How many defenders? One? Don't count the nose there. One, two, three, four. How many we got? We got three. Okay, how many we got here? We got two, what do they got? One, two, three, four. So right off the bat, he's just yelling, alert! They get in the huddle and say, veer. Great, they get up to the line. Veer means they're going right. Why? He didn't say left. He just said veer. They always go right. They always do the right thing. That's why they say they don't have to say right. They're going right, it's the right way to go. Then he gets up to the line, he says, oh hell, there's four guys there, we got to tie it in here. Alert! Everybody knows we're going left, that's all. Okay. Nice and simple, nice and simple. Okay, so he calls alert there. Now, so we're reading the man on or outside the tackle. So it's an out front, man on the tackle. So if he steps across, of course we're going to, with the ball, what are we going to do? Yeah. Give it. If he steps in and off, what are we going to do? Pull. Pull. Okay, so here, number one, <coughs> come one, a two, and a three. Number one, we read. Number two guy, we option, you know, for the pitch. And number three, we block. Okay, one more that. Now, we've got a flanker out here, you can't see him. There's a corner. We've got two corners on two wideouts. These guys are coming up tight now, playing tight. And so we're going to option that. Now, and you'll see in this play, this guy is going to slide in. So, of course, what's the, the deal for the quarterback? Pull. Pull. But you're going to say, wow, he slid in so far. This guy was trying to get him to the backer, locked down him, and just took him in. The back is going to go, looks like, for a touchdown. But that's our read, okay? So just seeing how the lineup is, let's show you two plays, and then we'll get going. How this all works, I'll we'll show you a lot of this afterwards. Okay, are you ready? So let's just watch that defensive tackle on the top left. Watch his movement first, and how we run. He steps in. Okay, linebacker overran the play. 
Let's go back now. So that we read number one, he read it correctly. The tackle went down. Next is option. There he is. Okay, the guy came inside. You thought quarterback may pull it up, pull it inside. So number two, the option man steps in. He took himself out of the play. Tight end comes around, he's waiting. Um, let's notice that tight end again. Whoops, sorry guys. Oh, that's the one I was supposed to get. Florida. If you ask him, what do you like to do more, run or pass? What do you think he says? Beer guys, come on, what do you say? He's a runner. Even in Florida, they ran 55% of the time. Utah, they ran 60. He wants to run the ball. He wants to run the option. He's not running a split back here, but it all began with two split backs when he was doing his option stuff with three guys in the backfield when he was at Bowling Green. Totally believes it. And I like what he said because I asked him a question, told him we were beer guys and all that, but he said, you know, what we want to do is make the defense think because we're in the shotgun with sometimes two backs in a quarterback or one back in a quarterback. But because we're in a shotgun, what is the majority of people, even the defense, think we're going to do? Throw. They think we're going to throw. He says, so they're always thinking, backpedal, that kind of stuff. Get out of the way. They're going to throw. He says, but we like to run. Now, the split back here with the quarterback under is just the opposite. We're up on the line of scrimmage because we want everybody to think we're going to run. Bring up all you want and everything else because, especially with the double tights, as Fisher DeBerry from the Air Force Academy, Coach of the Year in NCAA, one year said, the double tight formation is the very greatest formation to throw on. Now, well, yeah, you ran the wishbone. But now you look at some of the things some of the offenses are doing. They got a tight end on this side, and over here they got a little triangle, three guys right together, right? They're all tied together, so they're all compact. Why? Quarterback gets a snap, and now boom, boom, boom. They're going all these different places, and nobody knows what's going on. No, it's over here on the computer. Sorry. The lights are fine. It's over here, the computer. Sorry. Sorry, gentlemen. Yeah, we're good on the lights. I just I pressed the one that you told me not to press, the deck. I wasn't looking. I was excited about the play on the screen. So I pressed deck, and I found play. But thanks, Bill. Sorry, Joe, take an oxygen break there for a second. Just like when you got two flanks and two tights and one back. What does it do to the defense? It totally balances them. It balances them. But somehow or the other, someone's going to make a move the wrong way, like the free safety. He's going to line up maybe a yard or two or three to the wrong side. Quarterback's now going to go away from that side and do veer option. <gasps> got to. So that's the greatest thing about the double tights, which you'll see a little bit more about later. And uh, so if, if we're not able to run it to two sides, it also, a great part about the outside veer with two tight ends. Is the outside beer. Outside beer, guarantee you guys. And, you know, and I know some of you might agree or not, it's the greatest play that football can have. The pros would do it if they could, because it's just, it's nearly unstoppable. In fact, anytime, anything, every team in Utah, whether I was playing for the state championship or whatever, region championships, anything, they knew if it's fourth and one, they said, put six guys, six if you have them, five or six, I'm just at that area to tackle, because they're going to run beer. And we said, so we're going to pick up a yard. I guarantee you we're going to pick up here. But it's to give the keeper pitch. If we do pitches, we touch them. So if they can take away anything they want, it's not going to work. Although we wouldn't be stupid enough to do that. We'd still run inside here then, or sneak it or something, something like that. But, uh, but anyway, so you know, that's the key. So I like how Urban said it that way. I'll tell you what, let's go back to that play because I want to show you one more. Uh, Coach, you're great. Appreciate you. You should get a t-shirt just for that. Yeah, we'll go do that. Okay, let's go back to that play just to show you again how they ended up.
put in this one. This other one I was going to show you right here. Okay. Now again, take a look at how many guys are there. One, two, three, four, basically five. Three basic linemen. The backers are off a little bit. They're trying to read a little bit more on the outside. Got your two inside backers. Got one safety up on the left, and then you got your free safety. Now we got a flanker to the right. We got to split it to the left. Take a look at just what's going to happen here. Now, again, and our read. So who are we reading over here? Man on our, yeah, and there is one. Man on or outside right tackle. There isn't one there, then you go to the next guy over. So we're reading this guy, optioning. Now it's going to be him. He's going to play it softer. He's going to try to slow down the quarterback. And then we're going to block the next guy. Then we're tight ends, so he's going to release. We'll talk about that release. It's very, very important, slow, backward release. All right, make sure you don't touch the wrong button here. Yeah, let's watch the read man first. Now he gets even wider, the defensive tackle. <coughs> and then there's a beer block it all the way. Nice play. Now the defensive tackle overran it. He comes across, so of course it's a give. And then he comes in. So he's across too late. Too late. Some of you say, well, didn't he come in? Yeah, but what did he do first? His first step. He crossed. So all one step. <coughs> Defensive tackle. He's in the gap. One step. Now he comes down. And that's the point on the running back staying nose to the inside foot. And that mesh, later on as you'll see, it's got to be right at that inside foot. And then comes the word veer. So I tell my kids. That's why it's called veer. Because we're going to hit that spot and then we're going to veer off every time. And then when we go to the outside veer, that's because you're going on a veer angle. You're not going straight ahead again. So just trying to teach a little education to the kids. And then you see now, and this one wasn't as much a zone block. And we'll tell you some more about that later. Okay, let's go back to that one again one more time. Okay, now take a look at what the guard and center do together because they're going to do the old fear block. Down, down. Okay? You can always do that. Just do that types of blocks where he hits and goes. That guy's so far back, he's going to take and just blow him right out of here. Okay, so let's watch the guard and tackle on our offense. Boom. Linebacker down. All right, lights, coach. Thanks a million. I'll tell you what, coach. Do you mind? I'm sorry. Turn them off because then they can see this better. Can you see all right <coughs> while you're writing? Can we go to the other light? Is that good? Great. Thank you. Okay, why run it on any kind of offense? All right, just again, I do this kind of stuff with the teams, with the kids. You got to sell it to the kids. Just like if you're going to run a certain defense, you got to tell them why it's the greatest defense in America. Right now, this is the greatest offense in America. I can, I can prove it to you. I'll tell the kids. And I'll show you all the things, and all things that it can do. And then we'll, we'll go over some of that stuff. Okay, number one, you're a new coach, a new program, a new school, you're looking for some advantage. Why? Right now, no one else may be running this. You guys are, right? Oak, Oak Creek, right? They're running Oak Creek, but then they can hardly anybody else, like Air Force Academy, Navy, Georgia Tech. They're not running the split back, but they're running the option game. So it's very, very difficult, as you know, to prepare for that, because no one else that you're playing plays that. You only got three days to get ready, basically, for possibly. Okay, next, weather. Depends where you live. We live in Utah. Many of our final games of the state championship are played in the snow. Okay, in Florida, maybe not. You know, in California, maybe not. You know, so weather has a little bit to do with your choice of an offense to pick. Okay, the size, the strength, and the speed of your team. The line especially. You know, small guys, and you don't want to be blocking a lot of one-on-one -on -one or backing up like this because you haven't got a lot of big guys. You know, you have to make a decision on that. And of course, I'll hesitate for just one second here and say this offense or the 4 3 defense or the Bears 4 6 eight, they're all great things. And it's great to see coaches get so excited and come in, pay their money to come to all these clinics to learn the X's and O's, which is the chess game of football. Which is why I always love the game of football more than any other sport. If you think about it, because you're involved, you coach are involved every play. There's something that you can possibly do to make a difference. We think 
But overall, if you really think about it, how many times have you ever said to yourself, we just haven't gotten the kids this year. We're not very fast, we're not very big, we're getting stronger, but we're not like those other guys. You know, in that one school, they got the big studs and they're always fast. You know, but that's the key on everything, and we know it. But yet somehow or the other, if we can get that passion into the idea of training those players, and I know you all do anyway, but really, I mean, the passion like you do with the X's and O's. When I was a young coach, I didn't know the X's and O's so well, so I just put everything I could into making those kids big, fast, and strong 30-something years ago. And that made a hell of a difference then, especially when you were doing things just like running football, when you wanted to get the run straight ahead and block somebody. And the key on that always is to rem always remind myself, and I started getting a little bit away from that and spending more time with the X's and O's, more time in the passing camps, more time with all that, I started saying, shoot, we're not getting any better because our kids can't block them. And we can't catch them when they get away. And that quarterback's rolling a deep bomb, we're not able to cover them. You know, and everything always came back to, I've got the kids. And so the key on it is to train them, train them, train them. And everything we possibly can, get the passion, the commitment, be compelled to make sure that we do everything to make those kids to the very best of their potential and additional from there. Because it's possible. That's not a plug for bigger, faster, stronger, but it sure makes a hell of a difference. When we got those kids in those years, when we're going undefeated versus the years that we're only winning a couple of games. And you know, we're running the same offense, we're running the same defense, but yes, especially in high school and in Little League, they come and then they go. There's nothing we can do because that's what we got. But now when we got them in high school, we can train for three or four years, maybe even five to get them in their weight room a little bit earlier. Working on speed a little bit earlier, flexibility. And then their confidence goes way up because they see they are jumping higher, running faster, and all that. So that's a huge difference on that. All right, so let's go wide runner offense. Let's move on and let's keep going. This is going to be quarterback receivers. The first guy I told you about was not a throwing quarterback. I mean, he was like a shot putter. So some of the great passes that we have, which you'll see later on, phenomenal passes for him. Okay. Wide receivers, we didn't have many, we had big stud running backs. More running back types than receivers, or vice versa. Don't worry about writing this, it's just a sale to everybody about wide runner and veer coming up. Involve more opponents to more practice time, but not yours. Especially because of the fact when you run a triple option, you're working on a dive play, a quarterback keeping a play, you're working on a pitch play, and then you basically have a pass play right off of that. You're working on four plays every time you just run one. Just run around. And then the other teams, you know, think about what the other team's got to do in practice many times. You know, I know when we're playing against option teams, whenever we work, we never use the ball on defense. Because who's responsible for the dive? Do your job. We'll do our tricks, whatever else, do your job. And then coming down the line, who's responsible for him? So wait and see what you got to do. Whether we're coming down on the heart, or we're cat and mouse in him, or whatever we're going to do. Who's got the pitch? Now, what if the tight end is trying to block the pitch man? Runs past him and wants to be open for the pass. Who's got him? So everything comes down to now over and over and over. So we just would do it. You're there and do it. Fake a pitch, keep it. You got him, you got him, you got him. So everything becomes what again? One on one football. If you're a little bit bigger, a little bit faster, fine. You're really going to kick your butt. But there's no gang tackling, etc. Okay. It makes a huge difference against that point. Number seven, do you plan to two platoon or not? You got enough players or not? So you, know, so you make a decision which offense should we run? And then, of course, do you hope to emulate some big-time college or pro team success, which is the most foolish thing, but some guys do think that, right? They're going to try something like that. Well, let's be like that team. And so uh, it doesn't usually happen, unless you've got those kind of players, too. All right, so now, let's get it. So now, why run the beer? Okay. <coughs> now, so it's any kind of personnel. Because if you go back to the big, strong, fast guy, you got it anyway. you got now little alignment. You got even little backs, or you got big slow backs, or whatever else it may be. You may not be able to score a lot of touchdowns in long runs, but you're going to score three, four, five yards of crack over and over and over again. And if you got a decent quarterback versus that year, so it doesn't make a difference. Even if you got a throwing quarterback, I did it one year with a guy that didn't look like he could run it because he was a thrower. But I'll tell you what, when we threw the ball, though, we scored a lot, a lot of touchdowns. Players love it, number one, because everything's going forward, nothing's backward, especially for the linemen. Wide open, well, I won't say it. Let's just keep going over. Okay, line drives people forward. Wide receivers are wide open. Guaranteed are wide open. Do you know who has the ball? You do not know. I never know. When you're calling the sideline, you don't know because you're in a triple option. Dive back could have it, quarterback could have it, and then pitch man could have it. 
Then there's a possibility on a, a quad option where he might just dump it off to the tight end. All those possibilities. And so fans don't know, nobody knows what's going on with this. So how's the defense going to know? Winners run at a level. Now this is, that's an old statement, but even around the country still, as I find out from California to Florida, a lot of teams that are winning a lot of championships are still running the split back beer. You're one of the greatest teams in California. You the South, anybody hear them? I mean, they're phenomenal on ESPN. They're great split back beer team. Great to split back beer. Uh, too tough for the pros, I like that one. The pros aren't tough enough for this offense, right? They gotta protect their quarterbacks. And that's just a little fun one. Again, a sales to the kids. Has changed programs, just throwing these out throughout the years. Even some that are still running, like Air Force, Georgia Tech, Navy, and some of those others. Okay, coming on. Continuity, all runs and passes set each other up. It doesn't matter which run, from the inside beer to the outside beer to the speed option, every single play has a, a run pass combination. Totally. So you do your three step quick drop, and, or you can have your sprint pass off it too. But every run, every run that you do has a pass with many, many different uh, routes on it. Spreads out and weakens the defense, no game tackles, no pursuit. So we already went over it. Everybody's responsible for one thing. And early in the game, you better make sure, you, you know, we're going to be throwing something deep to the outside, but that offside's going to know between that offside linebacker and that offside corner, we're coming over there with a nice deep pass too. If not a slant, we're going to be throwing the deep pass right down the side on the offside. So everybody knows that coach can be yelling from the first series of the game. When that quarterback's making it right here, one, two down the line, step back, and he throws it back. Right over there, whether it be a post route, slant route, or a deep. <coughs> from then on, that coach on that sideline, you know you guys are. Don't you ever leave your man. Don't you ever take a chance at going over there and helping. <coughs> Free safety, you get your butt over there. And that's how it goes. No one knows who has the ball, not even me. And again, of course, is the power, the lead, the sweep. All those, is it a great player or is it just a great back? I just threw Emmett Smith's name up there, he's a great one. Was also an All-American for bigger, faster, stronger when he was a high school kid. A little guy who turned into a just super strong, muscular guy by the time he was a senior graduating high school. So, uh, you know, so backs can make the play. And that's how it goes. And then again, if you run any other running game, you better have bigger people, faster, stronger ones. However, if you don't have these, you want to score like crazy, run the beer. And I mean like crazy, it can happen. Okay, some of the responsibilities, right? Open backs. Now, why open backs versus an eye back? Or why not have opens, a strong set, a weak set, eye backs, <coughs> etc.? Okay, it all deals with the mesh. Even though you can rep it, rep it, rep it. Now, if you go from an eye formation to a split back formation, or put the full back behind you versus the open formation, the quarterback, even in his subconscious mind, will make a mistake sometimes. Now, one mistake could cause you the game on one fumble. The other thing about the eye formation, it tells the defense, of course, you're going to be doing something different. And they know there's only one running back. When you come out of the open backs, they, know you, they don't know which way you're going, no matter what. And I know the eye says that, too. But as soon as the flow starts, that makes a difference. Because now, can you run an outside beer in the eye? No. Can you be running a lot of the inside stuff that, that you can do out of either side with open backs? No. But the key on it all is the mesh. And anytime you get out of that mesh, and I've tried it. One year we just had phenomenal athletes that said, we can do a few other things. Because we can cover up. But the problem was we still had so many more fumbles. Because we decided to get a little bit of eye, a little bit of strong back, so we can get that one back out there a little bit quicker, and a few other things, and it just didn't work. Because I've learned that from Jim Wacker and all those coaches at Texas Christian and at especially North Dakota State. So you've you know, got to make sure that it's open set. And then, of course, the other things you can do out of it is a passing game because of the open set. Eliminating fumbles in a pitch relationship is all the same. Again, if you have an eye back and the quarterback, no, he's, you know, think about it. Your offside back, the pitch man, is over here on the quarterback. The eye back is over here. So when we come to the pitch, the quarterback's looking at it to read inside shoulder. He comes a step, did he remember it was an eye, did he remember it was an open? Because it's going to be different. Nobody's be saying he's got to look real quick and see it. Yes, we want him to. We want him to look, we want him to turn, we want him to pitch, we want him to step with the pitch. But still, if you're always in the same backfield, you'll never have the mistake. You can always do a blind thing. And it's back to repetition, repetition with it, and it works. It's all the same. Okay, a couple of points on the quarterback. 
third hand, and I, I know you guys know all these things, I've just got to go over for some of the guys who don't. Okay, the third hand, the thumbs together. Okay, now that just means, and the way I learned it from all those coaches, is we're taking the, the snap, left hand, and then this thumb is in the groove of the other thumb. Just like that. It's in the groove of the other thumb. So hand under, like that. Taking a snap. Now, two ways of taking a snap, which we'll go over in a second. From the center. Heading on, goes the quarterback. Okay. Extend the right, when in doubt, give. Okay, now extending the right, as we're talking, I don't know if I get over here, is again, the quarterbacks, especially when they're just learning and they're afraid, especially the younger guys, they just want to take it and get out of there real quick. And they're not even going to give the ride. But you got to convince the kids and show them over and over and tell them. Just the longer you ride it like this, what does that backer, especially, and that free safety think is going to happen? <coughs> He's going to get it. But if you just do this and come back out and go, then what? They're all going. The key is slow down the defense. Make them, yeah, they know who they're responsible for, but make them sit there and wait. And the longer you take that longer step, don't worry, you're going to be fine because you're going to step back on your power leg, then you're going to sprint at the end. And you got to get back to your power leg. So you just can't be sitting on that back power leg because no one, everybody knows you're not giving that ball. Ride it in, step it back, and then run to the end. And then when it out, give. Because if you give it, no fumble. Okay? Because there's going to be a lot of tricks being played all the time. And, if you're ever, and so the quarterback comes out and says, Coach, I thought he was doing this. You say, Fine, good job. You gave it. You only got a yard or two, fine. Okay, back to the third hand. And of course, as all you guys know, the sternum is the third hand. So we're taking that snap, put those thumbs in together. Everything comes here first. Open, out, ride, step back, back to the third hand again while you're running. You never run with the ball out here. I know you'll see some on the films. And you see it on the guys all the time. But the key is to avoid fumbles. Because what's the key everybody says about the option game? It causes too many fumbles. And that's only because usually in this area, especially when you got people coming all over. So you always keep to that third hand. Now when he even comes to the end, makes his pitch, fine. And goes up, down or off, and he's running down the field. He's got to keep it on the third hand all the time because he doesn't know if somebody's behind him, going to be stripping it away. Why not have three hands on the ball instead of two? And then pitch, two times the pitches. How many guys here that do it, pitch under, thumb under? Anybody go? Basketball. Okay, we got both. Cool. It looks even. About eight, four to four. Four to four. Now, just you, number one, I always wanted to do whatever the quarterbacks wanted to do. However, you have to tell them what the difference is because there is a difference. Okay, now one year though, I had a quarterback. He was an all stater, pretty good thrower, just decent, but he was a hell of a runner. He was a pretty big kid who was a hell of a runner. But his hands, for some reason, I don't know, they were, he, like, they were midget hands. Just, they were so little. He could barely get that thing, especially the left hand. He had a tough time. Even with the extension, he just couldn't do it. So we had to do the basketball pitch. And that was one of those years you just had to do it. Now, the problem with the basketball pitch, though, is when you're coming on line and you're getting a little bit too low, maybe you're trying to avoid something or you're being a slip, now with the basketball pitch, it's just too hard to get it up in the air. You're caught down here, you gotta get rid of it. With the thumb under, you can just, right from here, just flip up. With the basketball pitch, you're still pitching. And you want to get that soft pitch with the finger. So make your decision, talk to your kids. You decide also, and then try them yourself from left to right, thumb under and thumb down. And of course, it's all thumb. Just push with the thumb, push with the thumb. Okay, and then Now, a couple of points here. I need more water, guys. Sorry. Okay, now right back, left back. Now the key on that whole thing is to get relationships again with steps, how to catch the, the option, routes in the passing game. Always stay with a right back, left back. Now this, you don't have to do this, but this is just what Jim Wacker and some of the guys said, which makes it great. Some teams will go a full back, a half back. Full back's always on the tight side, unless you're double tight. Okay, but why not go left back? Because when you're going left side, he's always the dive guy. He knows which leg to step with, the mesh is just right, and he always knows what to do with the same elbow up. Then when he goes on to pitch the other way, he always knows how to catch it this way with the basket right here. 
doesn't have to change again, like that I-formation guy, who's going to change this way? Or does he go here, or you know, what does he do? So why not have a right back and a left back? And then of course they have to step with the proper foot. So stepping with the right foot, left foot. And when you're on the right back, you always begin with the right foot, because by the time you get your third step, your hips are open to the quarterback. Because each running back is five yards exactly from the line of scrimmage. Five yards exactly. And that is their feet. So when her hand comes down, they're almost four. But it's still it's a one, two, three. Jasper, right? Jasper's the quarterback, and I'm my leg is open, my hips open. Fine. No problem, ever. And so he always knows, because why? He's the right back. But what if now he had to move to the left back and then he stood up with the right foot? Now when he gets here, one, two, three, now the leg's gonna be up and we may have a problem. Okay, so right back, left back, stepping with the correct foot. So of course the left back when he dies, steps with what foot? Left foot. Okay. So left foot takes three. No matter how tall or small they are, it's gonna take three for the quarterback to get there. So always your ball running back. Coach, so, I'm sorry to clarify. You said right, if I'm a right hand back, I'm on the steps of the right foot first? Yes, sir. It takes three steps. Okay. Exactly. It's going to be three steps and hit that five yard area. Thank you. Always running back, remember also, it's always your ball. If there's a fumble, whose fault is it? Running back. Because if in doubt, you should have held on to the ball. Okay, so it's always your ball. All right, and then of course you'll see, because he's got to be reading too, but the quarterback's reading. Read it. Okay, so when we say read it, he knows man on or outside of tackle. All week long we said it's number 77 in the odd front. Okay, otherwise it's number 80 on the even front out there by the tight end. So when I'm making my step one, two, I'm looking at everything and I can see where's the read man. Now I already know if I'm getting the ball or not. And I'm going to even have to pull it from the quarterback if he's making a mistake. Because you got to know that. It's simple for you. You can see the guy right there. Okay, quarterback's thinking about a lot of other things, but you're thinking about one. It is your ball. So read it. Read the man you're supposed to read. High inside elbows, we know of course. Soft squeeze. Of course, you never want to put it on tight because the quarterback we just pulling it. You gotta make sure it's a soft squeeze. You will hang on to it and you'll know when you got it. That's through repetition, they'll know each other. Okay, pitch man down the line, fast, and then belly back. So the pitch man, he comes down the line fast until he gets into the spot where the other running back was, then he begins to slow down a little because he's now waiting for the right. But he's taking off to get out of the backfield area. And then he does a little belly back. I mean, you know, I'm going to go sideways so you can see. So he's taking off straight. He's in the spot here. Now he gets a little belly back so he can catch it coming forward. And that's a mistake a lot of your teams or pitch teams will make. The guy's running to the sideline catching the ball over here. He should be catching the ball here, going forward, reading his block so he knows to cut in or cut out. And with the quarterback is riding it correctly, there's never going to be a problem with that. So he's got to get that belly back and start coming forward. And by the way, again, on all this stuff, you know, you'll, you'll see how this all looks on that DVD. If anybody want to buy that DVD, I got about 10 of them left. It has every single play North Dakota State runs against every single defense, rear end view and side view. It's a $100 tape, which I got it for 10 bucks. I say it's $100 because it's really worth 1000 It's the thing that taught my kids and me more than anything in the whole world is this tape right here. So you want to get one afterwards. All right, going down, pitch man down line. All right, then yell ball and go, go, go. Okay, so now, of course, it doesn't matter if the quarterback is going to pitch it or not. By the time the pitch man, our pitch man, gets to the point where he starts his belly back, he's reading the defensive end. <coughs> Number one, the reason he has to do this is because the defensive end is on a, a slant, hard pinch slant coming right now. He's got to yell, ball, ball, even before he gets to the corner. So he's got to, now, if the quarterback hears it as he's riding, ball, ball, he's got to pull it, get rid of the pitch. And or, He's already here. Always in doubt, give. Whatever in doubt. But now he hears that pitch. I mean, a pitch. Excuse me. Ball, ball. He now makes the ball and gets rid of it. Yell ball. Yell ball. But even if the quarterback has handed it off, still yell ball. But the quarterback knows if you're out there, I don't care. I'm not giving it to you anyway because they already handed it off. The quarterback's still got to take off. He's still got to run around the ends with nothing, excuse me, pissing me off worse when I watch option teams. And the quarterback hands it off, takes a step or two, and stops. And as you tell your kids, now what is the strong the free safety going to do? He's not running out there to think you have the ball. He's staying there, he's going to make the play with the linebacker. So you got to take that thing, you got to run it, you got to discipline those kids that run it all the way out there as far as they can. Then, of course, go, go. So now they do their belly back, the ball's pitched, they catch it, 
They're just about upfield, shoulders are squared to the line of scrimmage, and now they see, go, go. So now the, the tight end who's in front of him blocking, or the wide receiver, knows, connect. They're not going to connect to the receiver until he yells go. Because he knows now he's got the ball and he's coming upfield. Now the man in front blocking can take him wherever he wants. He wants to take him inside, the back will cut out. He wants to take him outside, the back will cut in. But again, that's why the problem is when a running back catches it this way, he's running to the sideline, it doesn't help anything. Because the tight end, what's the tight end going to do? What's the tight end pushing him out? Now we're going to have to have him stop, put on the brakes, make a nice hard plant and come. Once you slow down, the play's no good. We want to be doing everything on a full speed on the run. Okay, another one running backs. Dive back going to the line of scrimmage goes, this is Jim Wacker and Mortensen and all those guys. But the biggest guy now was, was Rocky Hager, who won the most national championships up there in North Dakota. It's 80% speed. And I don't know what 80% speed is, but some of the kids want to just boom as fast as they can get in the line of scrimmage. Well, number one, they won't be under control because they're going to have to make some kind of veer once they get there, off the block. And that also makes the quarterback have to get there too quick, and it all happens too quick. So it's about 80%, which is very fast, you tell the kids. And then, of course, the repetition, they'll get what 80% is. OK, and then the tight end on the inside here, which is the biggest block of all. Whether he's going to get the corner on a cover two, or he's going to get strong safety on a cover three. An invert. But his first look, I can get up on the stage here, is from the stands, he takes a step back. Then he starts running to the sideline and turns his shoulders up. And now he has to see where is the containment. Even if it was cover two, maybe they're going to switch. If it was cover three, maybe they're going to switch. So he's got to see who will be the containment to take the contain on the pitch. So that's why he's getting his blocks correctly. And then he catches the pass off of that, which is the biggest place. Then, then you may not have to run anything else. We've had some teams, we beat one team 64 to nothing. Honest to goodness, all we did was run the veer, the inside veer. We didn't have to run the outside. I didn't want to because the score was so ugly. It was 64 to nothing. We just said, all right, just, but we have to read it because I'm not going to tell them to stop reading it until the fourth quarter. Then we didn't say stop. You know, just give the ball every time. And so we're just reading it and then, you know, just score it well. But the, the, the three steps, you still got to have three steps. So he steps back, and then it's one, two, three, and then turn. If the guy wants to start coming inside, we're fine. We'll come in like this and come back to get him. Even if we're in the backfield still, we're on the line of scrimmage. That is fine. So three steps in that tight end. Staying square, so we're blocking straight ahead. Again, if there's a man on you, like you got a Bears 46 defense or something like that, there's a Dean is right on me, or inside I. Now I got a strong safety right here in the line of scrimmage. Two guys here, goal line defense, two guys here, tight end blocks man out. We'll option this guy. So just stay low, hands on the hips, drive him out. Quarterback still does his inside read, comes at the end, makes the pitch off the strong safety. All right, so, uh, the, so you got to remember that one because he doesn't want to be releasing out of it. Be ready for a switch stunt. That's just at the contained man, run right out of quarterback, and the end man goes out the pitch. Uh, successful quarterbacks just got to see this coming down the line, and the tight end must see it because he's got to make his switch. Out, on the outside here, which is the greatest playing football again, the two things. Inside step, and if I can, Dean, want to come up? You might. We all see this. Okay. We're going that way. Dean, you be the tackle. This is the guy we're blocking right here, Brown. Okay, we'll just step. Okay, we're, we're about three feet. Okay, but now, see the guys in the three, uh, outside shoulder of the technique that we saw in the field film. Okay, step your right foot toward him, I put my left foot. We're together. I got my inside hand on, you got your outside hand on. I got my outside hand around him, you got your outside hand around him. We're gonna drive this guy back. We're gonna drive together. So that tight end's inside foot has to, boom, first step, match up with the tackle's outside foot. And now we got, as I tell the kids, we got four of us, what do you weigh, 200? I'm 170. So we're 370. <laughs> we're 370. That defensive tackle is only 250. We got four legs and four hands. He's only got two legs and two hands. How in the hell will he ever get past us? Impossible. Impossible. We're too big, we're too heavy, we're too strong, we got too many legs, everything. So it drives him out of here every time. But if they don't do it that way, the guy can slip through. He can slip through. Are we doing okay on time? 
past. How about if we just keep going? You guys want to take a break or do we need a break? It's up to you. You know, they usually give you a 20 minute break. Or we could just keep going and I'll stop the 20 minutes early. You want to do that? Okay. If you got to go to the restroom or something, go ahead. Okay, all right. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what. You guys mind, just stand up for just uh, 30 seconds, get some air. Number three, strong safety. Or a four forward look, could be one of the outside backers. There we got the tan on that spot. Remember on the reads. Cross block, cover two. <coughs> the tight end now as he's releasing on the back leg, coming back. One, two, three, see the corner, go to the corner. He's already out there, let's keep him out there. So now what's the wide receiver doing? The wide receiver's firing off straight ahead to the corner, even if he has to, he'll do that hit, and then he goes right to the safety. And then the running back runs right between the seam. Sometimes they get there right, it's just opening. It's just a beautiful play. Now it doesn't have to always be that way. It's best to do it that way, but switch it up now and then. Even though it's a cover two, tell the tight end, still go get the safety. But it's a tough block for the corner, because usually those guys are, for the wide receivers, the corners are up there about four or five yards, and playing around with that, and the guy just gets off and makes havoc for us. So, but let him keep guessing. But most of the time, just cross block. Stop, cover three. So just straight ahead with the wide receivers on a cover three. Those guys are usually seven to ten back there. And then it's a man coverage, run by him. You know, you should know by the time you play him, but they're playing you with the veer. So maybe they're not gonna man cover you. So you gotta find out that first series. And if they're not gonna stay with you, halfback pass every time, or just quarterback ride, come down the line and just lay it up. If they're gonna come up and try to help, just right now. And of course you have to do that, you should do that, not have to. You should do that early in the game anyway, so they make sure they're staying deep. So we love it if they're just gonna play man to man on the corners and try to do everything else with the other nine. Because sometimes that corner's gonna make a mistake. And uh, against a 4 4 or 4 2, tight end, she always go to the linebacker, because now, now it doesn't release outside. So even front, but it's a 4 2 look, because you still have two outside linebackers, on, or a 4 4. Take a look at that. So it'll be a give 90% of the time. Hopefully we'll have somebody who will have enough time to show you a couple. No. If not, he will option you containment. So again, should I draw it up real quick? Am I confusing anybody? Am I, should I draw it up? Yeah. Okay. So again, if we're looking at this, Say there's a strong safety right here. Am I good? Okay, now instead of him coming out here, we don't have a chance of that. So we've got to make sure we got one off, two, and then he comes release right here. Now, okay, <clears throat> that's the look on it right there, coming on the inside. Now we're reading the man on or outside the tackle. Who is it? Outside backer. So he steps in. Quarterback do what? Pull. Come to the end. Option strong safety. Okay. So just a reminder. Okay. So if that if that the defensive man is an inside like a seven or a six eye technique, the same thing. Kind of line. So if he lines up right here. Right. Okay. Now it's a pre-read right there. Would you say? But we can't believe in it, right? Because he may fool us and step outside anyway. And now he just steps through right there, it's what? It's still a pull. Okay? So he's going he's gonna to maybe bump into him. In sense of, you know, he used to call it a doodad block. Push him a little bit to delay him. Quarterback will have to ride back, come around. Feel like maybe he'd have to make a little belly around him. Because he's still going to get to that back. Good, good question. We'll get more, some more of that later. Okay. okay. All right, so let, now let's draw a couple looks. Here. Okay. Uh, so the first one here, I drew the one, the two, and the three on there so we know who we're optioning, who we're going to read, and of course block. And cover two, we're going to cross block it. All right, so let, let's go. Here's our read, man. Let's true veer block it. All right, so now we can't get any help from the offside. And I have this here, it could be right here also. 
doesn't matter. So we're going to have a one, two, guard on that side, comes right down. He's got to stay tight here. Get an inside foot. As close to that double team as he can. And a lot of your running backs will say they want to go right now and get out of there. But once they do that, if the crease is tight, they're going to get tapped. The crease will be, that's why they're at 80% speed, because once they hit that line of scrimmage, and they're beginning to move that nose guard, and they may even push him back into the offside linebacker, fine. Now he's going to take his inside step right to that linebacker. If this guy follows him, what do we do? Pull. Pull. If he steps across because he wants to come quick, then it's here, and then bust right up there. Tight end, cross block here, up, and over here. Offside, he's got to stay with him. He's coming to the linebacker, through safety. And as you know, some of you guys have already run it, that offside tackle in so many games, and it's great to give the helmet award or whatever you do, makes huge blocks on that offside safety. So when the back now, over here, he does break it, and now he cuts back because this guy's coming up to help. This guy's coming here, and here comes a tackle, taking him down. So that guy's able to score. Just so that offside tackle make a big play. And of course, that corner playing up in the cover too, he can just run him out here and play around and see if he's gonna cover him. Because if he doesn't cover him, as we'll tell him, then we're gonna throw back. A deep route. We won't throw two, because we don't need to, we'll just throw a deep one. He's not gonna stay with you all. Okay. On this one here. Now, let's get back to Jim Wacker in North Dakota State with Rocky Hager and all the coaches. And I have some quotes I'm going to read you coming up. The number one off formation to run, which they ran 50 to 60% of the time with double tight. Again, as we said, it balances the defense. You can run either of any of your plays, either side. Now, we just took that 50 that we saw here, and they were trying to screw up gaps and everything else where they line up. And now we know exactly where they have to be. Okay? The tackle moves inside, fine. But this is his job to be able to protect that, especially if you're a team that likes to run the outside here. You want to see if that tackle can maybe force a little bit of a problem, even on that double team with the tight end. Okay, so now you're totally balanced. So two ways to look at it here. If it was you, which way would you go on this one? Where do we have more guys at? Right or left? We got one extra guy here. Okay. Although he's there and he's there. Now the free safety is beginning to cheat a little bit. So that may be one thought that you have. That's why I try to make it tougher for you. Because the safety is coming over. So that might make it a little bit more difficult. But the key on all this now is that everything is balanced. We don't have anything different. So because tight end can come up to get him. So we like that. And tight end can take him or a cross block. So why not go to your flanker side? Doesn't mean you have to. But the quarterback wants to see that. So he can yell alert again. That's the big key word that North Coast State always uses, alert. Everybody called in the huddle, we said alert, it's the opposite. They said, uh, veer left, ready, break. You get up the line, gets up there, it goes, oh no, they we're just tight over there. All right, alert. So we're there. alert. Now they're going right. Okay. Same play. I even did it sometimes where we just call out the play with the hot collar. 46 beer, 46 beer. What we already called purple. Purple was not the hot cover that day. And then the teams that know me so well, and I've had a lot of my assistants and head coaches that play against me, three of them, and they, they you know, and when he's yelling out to play, you know, you know what it might be, but it's not. You know, it's just, we didn't call red. Red, 46 beer. Red, red, 44 load. Red, 44 load. Well, now the play's on. Okay, so defense never knew what was going on with that. Okay, so now we got just straight all the way. All right, let's see. With your zone block in it, and we won't have enough time to go over the zone block versus the typical veer block. But let's just drop the veer block right here. Shoot a veer block. One, two, three. And your nose guard is going to hate this if you're on the defense. He's going to see it on film if they ever played against another odd front. Because all three guys initially, because we're going to go right now a 42 or 44, just a straight old zone, or excuse me, veer, inside veer. It's a 42 and a 44. 42 is the inside foot. 44 will be the outside foot of the guard. That's just for mesh point. Okay, you can 
call it either way you want. We don't have enough time to put in all the numbering system, all that for you. So now we've got a triple team on the nose guard, and again, what we did before with all the, you know, with our guys, we got six legs, 600 pounds, that nose guard is only 200. We better blow him back into that other linebacker like you can't believe. So on a snap of that ball, this guy's going back right to here. There's no way this offside linebacker could ever help. No way. And if for some reason that nose guard was slanting really hard, say he was slanting this way, well then these two guys will just let him go and they'll both go get the offside back. Onside, straight to the backer. Right to the inside foot of that guard. Stay as tight as you can to that double team. It's really a triple team. Then you make your rear cut off of there. Reading, of course, <coughs> number one. Obviously on this one, he stepped across. Stepped in our face. Steps over here. Quarterback carry it out. Your fake, everything else. Tight end, cross block it. Any question on the beer blocking part of it? Typical beer slam blocking. You guys both do it that way or so? <coughs> you face more odd or even? Almost all odd. Almost all odd? Yeah, because you said about the three minute. Yeah. Does that help you out a little bit right there? Okay, let me get to the. Let me get an even front on here. Okay, let's see what you remember. Let's go back. Let's go to the double tight. Let's take a look again. Free safety is cheating. So that could be a reason why the quarterback <coughs> may want to go left on this one. Because now, what are we have kind of with the, the line? Double tight. We've evened out their defense and tackles. Look at the tackles. They don't want to line up. Kind of in a two technique. <coughs> We're not really sure what they're going to do. Okay, but now, we don't really want to think about the veer block, the down stuff. Okay, so you see an even front. Pretty good idea to maybe just let's go zone. Okay, so we'll have our double teams off of the zone, so everybody step to the side of the call. So in this one, I don't know how you guys feel, but I don't really like that outside background on the tight side, so we could go there, but I'm still going to go to the flanker side. We've got that corner out of there, we're going to be okay. Now it's an even front, so we've got to be thinking about what are we going to do with this linebacker right here. Who's going to get him? Tight end, thank you. Okay, so first thing, all right, we're still going inside beer right here. One. Two, three. Okay. Mesh point we know is on the four area, which is the guard. So we're gonna have a zone step hard, zone step hard, zone step hard. <coughs> Will we have a double team? Maybe, most likely. He's gonna zone step hard, but that man's gonna be dangerous, so you must get him. He's gonna zone step hard. We're gonna have two on here, we're gonna have two on here, we're gonna have two on here. One of these two will eventually get off to help on this offside guy. But, but the big pile up that we're going to have here, it's going to be tough for him to come under and then go way over. Okay. Corner over here. Read the man on or outside the tackle. There's nobody on the tackle, so we read the man outside the tackle. He steps across, what do we do? Give. He's got to know where it is. He comes off the double team here. He could come off the double team and go on the inside. The repetition you'll see. It's even fronts. Whether it be a 4-3 and or the 4-4 type of look. Okay, and of course, zone block from here all the way to the offside corner. Coach? Yes, sir? What do you do with that outside back? They're playing games. This guy? Yeah. Like he's going to step out and he's going to come in. Right. Okay, that's part of the read. As soon as he pulls, see, they made him pull. <coughs> Okay, but he, yeah, he, he would give. He steps outside. He would give. He he would give. And that's why he's got to stay right on tight here because if this guy's coming across here, he'll bust right through. Right there. You could though. You could, but the key on it though is you, you still could read it though. It's a possibility after you've seen your scout report enough, and he's he's down. He's thinking about well, they could be doing a switch. Okay, so he take a step out and then he just comes right back. So I'll get my feet. So he takes a step back, he sees the switch, he comes right now, boom, and hits right here. Right there. That's one way of combating that. But your man still, that's what he's going to stay so tight into that. Then also another thing you want, you know, that's why you got the outside here, and the speed option, and you know, all these things that complement. Right. When the teams, the teams start to do that, and you know they're coming bang, bang, as hard as they can to take away and ruin your inside beer stuff, which is your bread and butter, that's why you got speed option. And outside here. It's 
dispute out with the Great Mosque. Good question. Okay, Coach, would you mind putting on those lights again for just a second? We can cover these things and we'll get to the past. So we were talking about doing that a lot of questions. See? So do y'all. Unless you're worried about the stunts, but he still has to come back and see what's going to happen over there. Right? That's a good way to do it. Okay. Yes, sir. If you put that back up, what if they, what if they blitz the uh, outside line, I mean, the defensive end inside the outside linebacker on the edge? Our three is the free safety, the corner is there on the edge. Uh, you know, the even front? Are you talking about the even yeah, front? Yeah, the even front. Let me see where I can play that one. Here it is. Because it would tell us that the read would tell us the pull, okay. then it would tell us the pitch, but the corner. Say it again. Block. Go ahead. Say it again. We have the the that outside backer. In, right here. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The defensive end blitz go inside, which would give us a read pitch. I mean, a pull pitch. Pull. I'll be a pull. Then the outside linebacker comes to the outside. That gives us the pitch, but the corner is unblocked, and we give it a pitch to the corner just standing there waiting for no. the guy. No. So once he once he pulls, okay, he sees that. He's That's making his pull. His, he's making his pull. Uh -huh. He's coming down. The he's back gonna be option in this guy. Right. So then he pitches because the backer comes there and the corner. Oh, no, he'll the he'll elbow pitch on that one. Okay. Because this guy's going to pitch. So it's all gonna become a right okay. there. Because that guy will continue to go to the pitch. Alright? And by the way, then you know, recommended never have your quarterbacks do this kind of fake and stuff. Just coming online and hard elbow, guaranteed hard elbow and cut the guy's gonna go. Does that does that help? Okay. Would it work? Sure. Okay. You know, you may know as good as I do. Thanks, Coach. Okay, just want to read a couple of things here, and then we want to get to the, the outstanding passes. Phenomenal passes. We may not get out of here early, guys, but we'll get out of here on time. Is that okay? So I'm going to take that break. Because there's a couple, th I mean, I can go all night long on the passes. But a couple of things, just real quick, uh, some of the things about with the great coaches up there, what they said should be done. A uh, couple of things here. Over here. I hit the sled all year long for the linemen. All year long, hitting a sled. On Saturdays, have JV sophomores and those who hardly played the game go out and hit the sled. It's just like in the NBA. Those guys who don't get to play in the game, what do they do right after the game's over? They're in the weight room lifting weights and doing a lot of running. They are. All the NBA guys. I got two of my ex players and strength coach in the NBA. Okay, uh, what do we do if you have to be different in other schools? Okay. Find an edge, okay, education. All right, with two tight ends, every blocking assignment is the same. Number of defense, so the communication is easy. One of the things we did simply, we just said one, two, or three. We got away from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because we moved linemen around. Once they were guard, I moved into a tackle. Now a tackle was playing tight end. We're gonna have unbalanced looks and all this other stuff. We just said he's on a one, two, or three on the guard. He's on a one, two, or three on this tackle. He's on a one, two, or three on the tight end. One was inside shade, two was head up, and three was outside. So just do something simple where the kids can understand, especially if you're gonna move kids around. It'll make a difference. Yes? Sorry, if you already said this, line foot? Two foot, three foot, three foot. And again, because of mesh and everything else, it's never changed. You know, even though sometimes we let the kids have some fun, if they're on the offside, way over there, if they wanna go four or five feet, six feet, we said do it. Why? Because we wanna show you that the kid was taught by their defensive coach, you stay on outside shoulder, all right? Now, if he keeps doing that, we're gonna run something over there. We'll just run dive. We'll give you the ball to the running back, just run a dive. We'll go ahead and try it once in a while just to get it on film and see if they do follow you. Good question. Okay, a couple of things here from Wacker. Um, all right, on the, on the, on the veer, outside veer, the tight end must move the defensive tackle, forget combo blocks, <coughs> everything else. The premium on every running play is down lineman. Down lineman is the premium on every running play. If we do not move them out of the way with our two guys, because very rarely will be one of us against them, then the play won't work. And we gotta get that convinced to our kids. It must be premium down lineman. Then we'll get off afterwards, making sure we totally understand that. When you see an eight-man front, always go to unbalanced or a flood type of look, where you have two tackles on one side, or you have your tight end and your split end and your flanker to one side. And uh, over a little bit of that on our passing game here. 
just want to see if there's a couple other ones. Make sure down movement on the linemen. Don't next to worry about linebackers and then DBs, of course, is after. <coughs> yes, sir. Anytime that you see an eight man type of front, use some kind of unbalance, overload, whatever it may be. And, and if they're not going to make some switches and move people over, just keep going there. Because you're a beer team, especially if you're going to use the outside beer. You are a beer team. And it's funny how teams won't do it. I noticed even today, that's because of the passing game and all the other things. They won't do that kind of thing. You want a team to start overloading one side. You see the wing T teams, I see them now putting a lot of overload, unbalances and stuff. The defense aren't moving. Usually because those guys are big, fast, and strong, they don't care. They don't so, but uh, a couple other thoughts here. Always protect the mesh point. We said that. That's why the double team is so important. Always check where the free safety is. Always use alert. You're ready all the time. We use the word alert, alert, to switch the side we're going. Okay. And anything else? Uh, so before we get into the passes, let me just one more thing on the running. Uh, just some of the things on practice. Your best bet, because you got to get a lot of repetition in. Like Lyman will be inside watching film on Monday, Tuesday maybe, especially Monday. Just get out the line tapes. We have two centers, so we'll bring out two centers and or we'll let somebody else be in the center just standing, you know, how to just take the ball and snap it. But we never do anything in practice without a snap. Because we get fumbles if we, if, we, if we don't. You know, they got to get every bit of work they can with snap, snap, snap. So one quarterback's here, and the other quarterback is over here. So then I can just be back there coaching everything. Okay, and everything just becomes, we're going to the right, and as soon as we're all done, we're just gonna come over here, and then we'll just go the other way. Or we're just right here, one quarterback, and right here, one quarterback. Now I'm going left with everything, and this guy is going right with everything. Okay, so then I'll be standing here, or somebody else, excuse me, will be standing here to read. I'm on attack, we're playing an odd front. So, he just says, ready, hit, I step in, Pulls the ball out, right? Goes around, makes the pitch, etc. And runs around, gets to the other side. Okay, I step across, I have a ball in my hand. He gives the ball, then what do I do? I give him another ball. Why? You see, I want him to go down in my hand, practice another pitch. So you gotta get pitches every single minute, and you gotta get dive reads every single minute. The other thing is when he is riding him in, in practice especially, he's gotta say, give, pull. Whether you're just in line tape in pre-practice, or during scrimmage, or during group time, or whatever else, he's always saying it. So he's saying it out loud, and we all hear what he's thinking. So he's ready. Here, here, give! And it still takes it out. Quarterback, set it, running back, hurt it. Takes it, and then here, hit, right, pull! Pull, comes out line, pitch, pitch. Hmm. And he yells, pitch. So he yells everything that he's doing. So the running back's know it, he knows it, and he's getting to repetition. If he makes a mistake, everybody can hear him. He doesn't want that to happen. And so it really helps out a lot to do those things and those kind of drills. And then you always there with the ball to give him another one to pull his pitch. Okay, anything else? All right, let's get to, uh, now we only had a chance, sorry guys, to work the inside bear. That's why it's about a young game for two hours to talk about this stuff. Because the outside here is the best playing football. Let me just draw, I'll just put it on here real quick and then we'll get out. Just because a lot of passes are off of it. Okay, and as you already know, most of you already know it. I don't know why I'm drawing, but just for new guys. Okay, remember, we got him inside here. So start, but he's not starting the inside foot, he's starting the outside foot of the guard. I know some teams, they run it right to the tackle. Not a good idea. Because we still want to get this double team movement. And if the guy is fighting out to stay where the tight end is, he'll just stay right here. Because we're going to get this, and we're going to get this. And so now, the defense even wonder what's going on. But the key is, as soon as we get that movement on that tackle, we're reading this guy, here's our read. He gets his movement right through here. This guy steps down with the tight end. The <coughs> what does the quarterback do? Pull and come around. The option in the corner for strong for free safety. Right there. Outside here. And this is simpler because it's only basically two things to do instead of three. Because in 
instead of reading inside, getting outside, you make your option and then go for the pitch. Uh, you just got the one option and then a pitch. And that's why it's basically even a better play, in a sense, because it's simpler, if that makes any sense. You know, K-I-S-S, you can run a great option, you have something that's simple, question. What is this footwork, is, is it a much different? Okay, like we showed you over here, Coach and I, we came together. The tight end's inside foot comes together with the right, outside. As far as the quarterbacks. Oh, the quarterback, yeah. You know, and the guys have different ways of doing it, right. including North Dakota State and Texas Christian and all of them. But the key is, what always worked best for us, whether I had a tall 6'2 guy or a guy who was 5'8". So our key was, because your toes are always pointed in, Never straight ahead, never out, of course. Out is horrible because you won't get any power. So we always had the toes slightly in, and as soon as they took that snap, it was go, right here, one, two. Because he's only going to the outside leg of the guard. Okay, so he's not going to the tap, and it's, it's only a two foot split here. He's gotta to get to that spot, which is just the outside leg of the guard. So it's just one, two, right here. Now he's already on his veer, so he can veer it in right now. And he's veering it in, and pull back, and then go. It's a great question. I've seen other guys say, well, he's got little steps, he's just going to go one, two, and get there. That's because they're going too wide. And according to the experts, North Dakota State, Texas Christian, et cetera, that's not where you're supposed to be. It's supposed to be going off the outside of the guard. So now, when the defense even sees it initially start up, they're not sure if it's the, the zone, the 44 zone beer, which is the outside foot of the guard, where the tight end's still going outside the block. So they have to come back and see, what has the tight end done? So they know, is it an inside veer or is it an outside veer? Because it still could be an outside veer and you practice the same play. It's the same play. That inside foot that you're running is usually with the slant blocking. If you're going to get to some zone blocking, it's got to be the outside foot of the veer. And then it looks exactly like the outside veer. So that's an automatic pitch or did the quarterback just keep it? On, on, when he gets out here? Yeah. Yeah, he'll keep it. Okay. And he wants to make sure, and another good point, you know, you come up with all these thoughts and you ask questions, which are great. The quarterback's not going to run as fast as he can to the sideline until the contain man comes to get him. But if the contain man went to the pitch, then he just keeps running. But he runs to the sideline, upfield sideline, because he's thinking about getting away from the offside linebacker. If he starts thinking about cutting back inside, boom, that offside linebacker may hit him right in the head. And all of a sudden we got a fumble or something. So, you know, you got your hot shot guy who wants to make a cut back in and go. End of the game, let him do it, okay? But for the rest of the game, you know, make sure that he's just thinking, I'm going to get the speed, get to that corner, get to that corner, and just tell him, that linebacker on the offside is coming. Our tackle didn't get him. Our guard didn't get him. Our center didn't get him. You've got to run. So you like have him attack the corner, sort of? Yeah, that would be great at it because you want to come right to it and then make him pitch. Right at him, make him two Yeah, but if Kataman does it, we'll kill him. Yeah. His job is to get to the pitch. Yeah. Right? But they'll make the mistake. Anyway, so yeah, because there's so many passes based off the outside mirror. And I'm going to. All right, I got to get two pens here so you can see it all. Cubbed in color. All right, now let's go. The number one basic best pass that there is, and people over the state of Utah, including college, who ran at Southern Utah, said, How in the hell do you guys run that play? Simplest play there is, and you just make it work all the time. So, in any situation, people are always yelling at us, Watch the tight end. Okay. And this one is just basically called, if you use numbers, it's a 42 because you're going to fake to the inside foot. Dump pass. Dump pass. Okay, and all it is, this guy does release inside, so what do they think is usually coming? Outside beer. And right here. This guy's usually stepping right to this area right now. As soon as this flow starts this way, he comes around here, but he's not gonna belly back this time on the dump pass. Because he's coming straight here and then he's gonna come right now to that end. Hit it right in the hip. He doesn't have to push him down, he doesn't have to do anything else, just getting away. Coming right there. And the quarterback now takes a step. He puts the ball on the hip. He does now not put it in the belly. Because again, something can go wrong. And this is a quick dump. Dump pass. So it's just turn, hit the hip, eyes. He reads through his eyebrows, the word is. Read through your eyebrows. So you're here, you're reading. You can see the tight end, you can see the linebacker. And then pop up, dump. For some of those kids, it's just, just dump it off. And we do it early and often enough to keep the linebackers off. Coaches are always yelling, free safety, watch tight end, linebacker, watch tight end. As soon as they start doing that, we just run the ball again. 
He's not worried about the thumb pass. And that's as crazy as that simple, simple pass goes. It's just phenomenal how it works. Then we can go with dump pass throwback. Where we know this guy's coming across fast, this guy's just hanging loose, and we're just gonna have him come right here because this guy's over penetrating to the onside. They're moving, as soon as flow starts, he's coming up, and we just dump it right there. Quarterback the back on his steps, just takes it, hits the hip, eyes up, onside, turns, dump. Right there, dump right there. And also if he split, he's something with the split, but with the double tight, it's even better. Doesn't work, it works a heck of a lot. Especially on first down, short yardage situations. Fourth and one, if you got the guts to do it. Right? Because we know we can get one yard running, but we know we'll score on that one. Okay, so the dump pass. Now I'm going over these quickly because we're running out of time. Because there's so many great ones, i got to get you the best stuff. <coughs> Okay, now, yeah, it'd be nice if we get to show you a few more plays on the video, too, otherwise. Okay, all right, so that one there. All right, now, the, the, the second most popular of all of them is the dive. We call it the dive pass because we're not dumping it off quick. We're going to go through the whole motion of it. Coach on the, on the throwback, that tight end's covered. <coughs> the, corner, the corner will be behind him. It'll always be a dump for the corner because the corner's going to back up one, two, and he's going to come toward the tight end. He'll still be behind him. So he'll be reacting to him. For some reason, that, that inside linebacker isn't flowing. Oh, then don't run. The don't run it. No. Yeah. What do I, what but do then you go back to your running game. Because that's, that's, that's why you're going to do that. Because the, the only reason we throw the football is to slow down the defense. <laughs> Although we score so many touchdowns on passing, but we don't want to throw the ball. Like we have had games we never threw the ball. That's just because we were a little bit better than everybody with size and strength and all that, so we can just keep running our stuff. <coughs> our passing game, though, just keeps them honest. And again, if you can run the dump and the dive pass, especially early, for a series, something like that, and then throw deep off of it with the wide out, it's, it's fantastic. All right. Okay, so coming here again, if it's five fronts or three front. And we're balancing them out because of the fact that's where they are. Okay. Dive pass, he's getting released back here. He's seeing who's the contain man. He sees it's him. He's gonna run past him on a deep route. He's gonna come across, say, oh crap, and there he goes deep. Because right now we're coming in here. He's gonna run gonna zone step it to here, zone step it to here. All the way back. Okay, coming in here. Coming across like this, excuse me. Locking right here, then he steps, and then steps again, and if not, he can come back. He doesn't like what he sees. We'd like to throw it right over here. Okay. Contain, right in here. Okay, so now the tight end's releasing out. Quarterback, I'll go your side. Takes a step, hit. Quick right off the hip. One, let's step right here on number two, and dump it off. Dive it off because it's a dive off the dive thing. Okay, so we can like, get it right there. If not, when he comes up, tight end is picked up. He takes it and throws it because he sees the corner came up, the strong the safety came to hit the, to get the tight end right now, and there's your wide receiver wide open at the end. If for some reason he gets stuck at this spot right here, then come back. So the way that looks, like with, you see in Georgia Tech, come down the line here. One, one, two, no, I don't like it. Then one, two, three, then take it. Throw it over there or look back to the offside. That offside guy is right through here. And again, because you're going back and forth, you're running your option game. You keep thinking the tight end's coming out the block. And that's why your tight ends do such a great job every time on the block to make it seem like it could be a pass. And that's why it's coming off slow. And then when it comes to the passing game, now the tight end wants to get out quicker. Don't let it happen. Tell them to do everything exactly the same way you've been doing it on the run. Because we must make it look like you're running. And then you'll see how wide open that you are. Okay, great. Now I'm flying through it. And, but, gotta get to these. Let's just show you. Now there are a lot of others. You can be out in a slot to one side. 
slant, one, two, step, you hit your inside slot man because the strong safety is coming up right now. For some reason, why does it work all the time? If you've got a twin set or a slot set, you spread them out with another split to the other side, running back comes around and block the end, quick ride, one, two, step, throw. It just works great, although there's a better way of doing that later when we come to the outside here. Okay, now I'm going to drop here so we can do a few on the same page. Now, the dump pass is probably the most productive of all of them, but this is probably the best pass to score anywhere you want. Uh, as crazy as this may sound, we're down to a team. They were ranked number two in the state. We were ranked number one. We were down. We're on the 20-yard line. There's 30 seconds to go. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, though, but they know we're a beer team because we do run and continue to run our beer stuff because the kids keep believing that we can bust it and our good backs and speed can break and go all the way. So we run the, this pass coming up. 80 yards away. We did put, at the tight end, our fastest guy, who usually plays split end, but he does play there during the game at other times also. So now we have two fast tight ends. And so when this play comes up, and he caught it as he drug across, took it down the sideline, went 80 yards, and we ended up beating the team. So we, we kept our, our ranking there. And, but I don't know why, they, although they were loose, but when you're double tight, Everybody for their team is in a little bit tighter too. All right, so what it is, it's called a high pass. Running back's coming here, and then he's gonna kick out. Running back's coming here, and he's gonna kick him in. So no matter what, we're gonna double team that outside back. I'm gonna just draw the routes here, so let me see, let me get these here. And whether you have them tight or not. Okay, so now on the, on the snap of the ball, there he is. And then he's got to come one, two, three. He's coming back. Inside release. He's going to get past that safety. He is the number two read for the quarterback. We're looking for this. He's going to step, whether it be here and or on a tackle on the guard, on the three technique. Hit. <coughs> Not even a one, one thousand. Just one, one, and then he takes off. As this corner turns and runs with him, these guys are playing aggressively. Say it's first down right now. He runs past, tries to get outside the backer, and comes right over here. By the time the quarterback hits his one, two, third step, the tight end is just over the other tight end's area. So it's snap, one, two, one, two, three. He's looking still over here. Open, throw. If the corner stayed and didn't go, then his number two read is the offside tight end, deep. And if they covered it, throw it over their heads. But nine out of ten times, as funny as it may sound, even there on the goal line, that play works. As soon as that tight end heads up, the offside tight end, and that tight end drags, even over the man coverage, they let him go because they still know that Bojack in his school is going to run that dog on fear on goal line. But this play is there. And if it's not going to be that one, because we're running out of time, it's going to be off of the keep plays. There's many other plays you can run off of this, too, guys. Get that post there. Take that post to keep that other safety away. Okay. What was that last one called? Pardon me? What was the last, this, the top one called? Uh, that's called high. <coughs> Fear pass high or 46 high, depending if you use the number system with it or not. If you ever want to go to the number system and all that, if you ever want to, you know, email me something, we'll get you all that stuff later if you want to do that. Okay, now, let's do this. We'll call this a flood route. Here. Uh, Navy, their offensive coordinator, Joey DuPay, was my assistant coach at the last school I was at, and, and they really loved what we did with this series. Okay, it's off the keep. We call it, it looks like a 46 beer, but he's keeping it, the quarterback. And then the passing game that went off of it. Okay, so anyway, they, they, they put some of this stuff <coughs> in. But, so they are using it on that level too, but the key is you can do this in an unbalanced set or what we call a flood set. So you have an eligible tight end or not, you can always switch that up and he can be just barely off the line and I'm on the sideline telling the referee that tight end is eligible, that tight end is eligible, he's off the line. This guy is ineligible because he would be on the line. Okay, but we always shift over, shift over, shift over. It's happening all the game through and they keep saying, tight end's ineligible, tight end's ineligible. We wait till they say it enough times during the game. Then when you switch them over, we just call it a special unbalanced. 
So then he comes over and he just lines up a little bit past, a little behind. And this guy is already lined up on the line, so there's two wideouts over here. Okay? So now, on the snap of the ball, if it's a, a, a passing play, this guy just runs backwards. This guy would now be back here. He's eligible to step forward and do this. But they're already yelling, he's ineligible. So now a strong safety was over here in the corner. He covers him, he comes chasing him. This guy's wide open right here. We're gonna run off of this, where he's gonna block the end. He's gonna come right here and just throw the ball. Short yardage, goal line, anything else? He's just gonna come down that line. Quarterback, again, like this. Taking a snap, coming right to the end, right there. He does a quick hesitation, then step up, and then look, go. Off the outside beer, which is called the keep, because the quarterback's keeping it. Even on a running play, it would be called keep. 46 beer, base block by the tight end. And now we're not going to base block because we're letting him go out. If, that, if we use that formation, go ahead. Would be a legal formation? Yeah, I'll see the six guys on the line. No, no, no. Yeah, you're going to tell you guys he's on the line. He's on the line. He's still at six. He's still at six. The split end is on the line? This, this is the split end. There's nobody over here. No one on the other side. Splits on the line, too. Okay, this guy is in the backfield. These are in the back. There's your four. So he's on the line, he's on the line. It's all up. Sorry, I didn't draw it. Okay, they're both on the line. And that's why this guy goes backwards. Sure. He's, not, he's eligible. He's not. And so when I tell the referee before the game, you know, we have meetings, when we run that unbalanced passing play, guys, remember, our inside guy to prove to you and everybody in the stands that we weren't cheating, he's going to run backwards. But we like him to run backwards because he pulls the defensive guy with him. They think they're going to throw him something. And again, you could do something like that even with an option where he could be out there and be the pitch man. We've done that too. When we put another guy in motion the other way, and now that inside guy becomes the pitch man. So we'll run over there in a keep, tight end base at the end, and the quarterback keeps going out, and then put our, our other option man went the other way. So they pull somebody with him, and now he's just sitting there waiting, and we pitch to him, and we just take it in the end zone. Do you still have your I mean, there's a lot of fun things you can do with that. Is your tight end still in a three point stance there? Yes, yeah, always. Because we still want to make think that we're going to run the beer. Outside beer or inside beer? He's going to release outside, he's going to release inside. But now, remember, when he releases outside, could we be throwing on a dive pass? Yeah, they're watching the film. They say, Coach, it looks exactly the same. They say, That's right, so keep your butt back. So now our running game is great. Or if they said, start yelling at halftime, Get up there, you've got to be better on that pitch. Now our <laughs> passing game to that tight end looks better out there. And then the same thing, what we do with the dump pass. Tight end is releasing inside, they think it's going to be an outside beer or something. And all of a sudden, here comes the linebackers, we start throwing it. Coaches on the other team start yelling, keep off a little bit, take a longer read step. Now our running game is going to gain an extra yard or two. Because the defense has to worry about the other things. What's the name of this play? This one right here. This is, we just call it keep pass, and then call your numbers. We call it stop, we call it slant. You know, you can go nine to it. You can run anywhere on the field, but short yard is pretty phenomenal because what's the defense going to do when you're, you're either two tackles at that side, and that's the other one, guys, what you can do. This could be your tight end over here. So they got to acknowledge it with a corner, and free has got to be aware of that because you know they know you're going to dump it on a throwback. You go here, they know that you have the capability to even throw it in that tight end who's playing tackle now. And that's why you're trying try to fold. Sure, yeah, you are. Pull the defensive guys over. Get them away from that flood set. Keep that free and that off corner there. Because if you don't, if you keep the tight end over here, when you're running the flood just with these two guys, then they'll start moving people over. All the way. So back to your chess game again. Yes, Even if he's a tackle, he's that report eligible if you're going to throw uh, yeah, but you wouldn't. I know, but he'd out. still be an eligible receiver at the end of the line. He, he could be ineligible. No if he was covered, he's ineligible. If he's not well, covered. I mean, if he's left yeah. uncovered, even if he's a tackle wearing a second exactly. number, he's exactly. still, if you're reporting many. But again, this makes the defense team. think. Right. And once they're thinking, they're in trouble. <laughs> We're not going to throw them on that one. But that's why we like to keep the tight end there for when we switch him and do that. But it's still possible to keep, if you're worried about those safeties and corners coming over, put the tight end attack over here. Or you could and then the other thing we have done, just so you guys know, we do report him eligible. We, we cut a jersey, an 80 jersey, okay? We cut it right down the middle with Velcro, yeah. and then we tell one of our tackles, or <laughs> vice versa, one of our tight ends puts on a 70 shirt, yeah. 
Okay, now he's going to go to that spot. Yeah. Okay, he knows how to outside veer block. He knows how to do all the stuff. So we don't have to teach a tackle. And he just puts on that shirt, throws it up, and runs out there. Okay, <laughs> it's all legal. It's all right. Just got the right number on. Yeah. And that works. My wife just put on the belt. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Play those little games. On that, but I'll tell you what. Let's just take a couple looks at a couple of these plays. And, and, uh, and again, if anybody is interested in the, the DVD. It's about three hours of all, every single play, inside beer, outside beer, speed options, it's all the passing game, and it's all North Dakota State stuff. It's the one we're watching right now. Coach, do you mind? Let's watch a couple plays, and it's 8.30, uh, 8.35, so everybody going to head out. Here. Take a six. Take a six and just add a little square patch right there. Let's make it an eight. Make it seven or one. And <laughs>